Welcome back to Big Board. We're looking at Deadly Northern Lights from TRL Games, Thin Red Line Games. Time for us to have a little recap on the major portion of Turn 1 up in the northern section of the maps. What I've decided to do when I'm playing is play the northern section, go all the way through the turn for the most part uh, on one side, and then we'll go back down, we'll go down to the south end of the maps, deal with things there, and then anything else in between the two primary ends of the of the game we'll we'll deal with on a catch as catch can basis. So what happened? Turn one. Pretty interesting stuff. So obviously at the very beginning the Soviets declare their hostilities. And you by that time you're expected in turn zero. Or, you know, you could do it in turn two, but in turn zero and turn one, you can uh, use your uh, movement capabilities that, that are somewhat restricted to position forces and stage forces for your impending invasion in either turn one and turn two. So really up to you as the Soviet player when you deploy, keeping in mind that reinforcements and other uh, sources of uh, assets are going to be coming online for the NATO side as the turns progress anyway, regard, pretty much regardless of what you do. So, excuse me. So let's, let's have a look and starting over the far side of the map, the first thing I did was, hey, let's, let's do something simple or what I thought was going to be simple. And that is you do a land-based combat attack against that uh, small unit there, the battalion of uh, Norwegian forces and so the colonel of that division uh, category 2 division set off across land uh, accrued a fatigue point and then got after it uh, against those hedgehog uh, enabled uh, Norwegians didn't go well uh, <laughs> rolled a 20 on the combat results table which is the worst number you can roll rolling low on ground combat is a good thing. Suffice to say, after several iterations and redos and thinking over a possible options that I could have used, we did uh, we did get to the conclusion that no matter what I did, it was going to be an A1 result. So I, I left it as is and thought, okay, well, that's a, a lesson learned there. Uh, not sure what else could have been done unless we perhaps tried to put a, a strike on the enemy uh, before we attacked, that might have you know, potentially placed a step loss on the unit. But even then, it's not, it wouldn't, because I rolled 20, it wouldn't have made a difference. I still would have got an A1 result and it would have been the end of the activation for that particular unit. Now, Really, that attack is, it doesn't matter. That unit can stay there for all I care. In fact, it'll probably be out of supply sooner rather than later, but it was a good opportunity to sort of exercise my uh, knowledge of the ground combat rules and uh, goof around with things and see what worked and what didn't work and make sure that we we're doing things mostly correct. So then we moved a little bit further along the coast and had a look at uh, doing a landing right here uh, with some <coughs> with some uh, paratroopers and we landed here one unit here and one unit here or here and then moved into uh, position to gain concentric bonuses but this uh, this guy I think where is he this is the chap that led off the attack obviously with this stuff here uh, we're using all the extra supply rules uh, you know ammo and fuel and stuff like that but nevertheless uh, so we attacked here another horrible result a very high roll again it was an 18 uh, went through the same exercise again there and I said hmm can I uh, can I do better can I do better by you know using some air or and it just with an 18 wasn't going to make a difference so you weren't going to get enough either odds up or uh, net DRMs to make a significant difference now here in fact what I did I actually attacked with this guy first, trying to get the quick hit, uh, having this dude adjacent, uh, uh, and get a quick hit on that one and see if we could get a win. 
and then uh, followed up with this chap here. And then I believe it doesn't look like I put air in. So I didn't, I ended up not using air there. Or maybe I, why didn't I use air there? Maybe I did. I, mean, I have to go back and look at the photographs, but nevertheless, the, the, the way that rolling an 18 just crushed you, crushed me there as well. So I thought, okay, well, let's, uh, let's get some experience with Marines. Let's see how Marines work. And we'll come up, we'll come over here and talk about the naval stuff in a second. That's a sort of an earlier part of the turn. Uh, let's see. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit. <clears throat> oh, so first, yeah, first thing I thought, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to get, I'm going to get my Alpine enabled, Alpine skill enabled paratroopers in, and we're going to capture this damn airfield because it was, in fact, not, uh, oh, it had a, it had a uh, headquarter element in it. So we landed, attacked, were successful, took the airfield, but of course, whenever you uh, exercise combat in a hex with uh, in installation or facilities, you cause damage. So that is inoperable until I repair it. And I'm gonna have to do that at the end of this turn. So the beginning of turn two, we'll have an operational airfield here. We've brought additional units in to protect it. I brought some, uh, I dropped some units here. Uh, we'll get to those in a sec. So captured that, these guys, uh, were not in reserve mode or anything like that. Probably should have been. Probably should have moved these, this turn, this uh, uh, turn zero into this hex to reinforce that hex. Unfortunately, uh, I decided to keep this uh, option here a little bit flexible so that he can move down to Narvik to support it or or reinforce here. All right. So over to the marine landings. Uh, so first off, I this uh, third unit from the Alpine uh, paratroopers moved down here, cleared the coastal guns, then moved here, cleared the coast, coastal guns that are here, paid the extra movement points, moved back up to here out of the way, just cause. And uh, then I landed this, this force here with the expectation, oh, there's probably, oh, there's nothing there. Uh, with the expectation that they would knock these guys out pretty quickly. Uh, brought in a coastal gun, uh, sorry, main guns from uh, this destroyer and frigate here and air and still did not get the result. I got a, a good die, a relatively good die roll, but as a contact result. Now, unless you're using the optional rule that's called fluid combat, a contact result will mean that this this you're done for the turn and and you're in contact and you cannot continue uh, combat. Now there is an optional rule that will allow me to do that, and I'm I'm tempted to come back and revisit that and have a look and see if that's something I want to do with the contact result because it's an amphibious landing. It's uh, you're going to lose a step. Uh, just because you know you, you it's, it's a little, little more difficult and a little more dangerous so they, they enforce a step loss here painful right so that's one two three four step losses of infantry uh units and, and they're all elite uh, pretty much uh so that's painful the next thing that i did was uh, so you can see this hasn't gone well <laughs> Uh, uh, landed these other marines in this hex here. Decided to uh, call it bygones because if I land if I land these guys here, they have to attack, and there's no point in me uh, bringing these guys in and doing one to basically what would be a one to one combat. And we'll get to why it would be a one to one combat in a second if I remember uh, because of the air assets that we have available. So the final thing here, uh, trying to uh, clear away another route into this port and to uh, land and previously land units here. I, I dropped on this chap here uh, to, to knock out these guns, excuse me, uh, dropped here, here to uh, cover that bridge. And we, you know, we're just, out, just about out of uh, air support. Now I was going to continue uh, naval, uh, amphibious landings and and one additional 
airdrop. But you know what? I, I thought, given how bad things have gone at the start at, for now, let's let's see if by turn two. Oh, I had you all out of frame there. I'm sorry. So uh, all of that pointing and clicking was me taking out these guns here. Okay, uh, excuse me. These um, these coastal guns here. I landed these marines looking for additional ways to bring uh, forces in. I was going to bring an additional, uh, sorry, these are paratroopers, uh, bring an additional Marine detachment in here and land them and, and sort of either march down here or come in this 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 way towards Narvik at just out of frame. And I'm going to move the camera again and zoom out a little bit. There's Narvik there. Okay, so, uh, well, here actually, and there's a naval port here. So, that was basically the the, the, the options, the, the activities for the, for the turn. And that gave me, left me with some two formations that I could, could use. I'm going to hold off on using those. We've got them, uh, we've got some of the naval stuff in a task force ready to be deployed, but we're, we're having second thoughts about doing that. Uh, one of the things I didn't do correctly during the game turn, turn zero was I didn't move the task forces. I forgot to. I just had them on the on the display over there. So theoretically, they they weren't in range. But the reality is, we would have moved our task forces up into this sort of area here, and then they would have moved and staged and unloaded and all that sort of fun stuff and, and dropped all these guys. So not a big deal. Not a not a consequential error at all. So part of it, one part of the game that's it's quite interesting is. This, this, and it's all new to Under an Iron Sky. And, and to be fair, this is one of the areas where I, I, I struggle with TRL games rules. And I don't know whether it's, a, it's a, a cultural thing, but the wording is often around the other way. So they'll say, and I, I, don't, have, I don't want to go into it, con concrete examples, because I've had conversation with the designer and, we're talking about wording on, on some of the, the rules and, and how there were, might be alternative ways that you could present the information that is, is a slightly less confusing. Uh, and, it's, and it's not that you're going to get it wrong, but you're going to read it and go, oh, well, this means this. And then really what it means is that. <laughs> so it, it's, it's a subtle thing and it, it, they're kind of spotted throughout the rules and, and you really, or scattered throughout the rules and you really need to be, stop and go, hang on a second, what that actually means is this so just be thoughtful it's a, it's a language thing you know it's a it's a translation thing and i think it's also just a, a a conceptual thing cultural thing in terms of stating negatives versus stating positives or stating something in the in the affirmative versus the negative or something like that i think that's what the, the challenge is anyway so with the naval rules because it's all very new I, uh, I had to go a couple of rounds on, on working out how to do this. So you really have to, I think, uh, if you have air superiority in a mega hex and naval surveillance, which and you can't put naval surveillance unless you either A, have air superiority. Well, see, you can't have naval surveillance if there's enemy air superiority. Uh, so... The fact that I have air superiority just gives me a bonus to these, these guys' capabilities, basically. So naval surveillance, ASW surveillance, that's going to allow me to make one attack in a turn uh, against a unit that's uh, spotted. Uh, and it's going to give everybody, every enemy unit in the Mega Hex, a one uh, detection level of one. And any other activities that we conduct against that unit will bump up the the detection level on it as well so there's a little bit of fun and games going on here in terms of sub versus sub trying to find each other it's very difficult to do that and suitably so right you got two relatively quiet submarines sneaking around trying to find each other without using active emissions so that takes some time only one unit can try and hit a, a unit all right so you can't uh try and in intercept this guy and if he fails, then try with another, and then try with another. It's kind of letting you have that sense or feeling of the, uh, you know, d a dude is steaming in a certain direction, and you're you're plotting a course to intercept, 
And if you don't make it, well, then you can't really call on somebody else who's you know somewhere else at a position to try and conduct that intercept. So we went through that exercise. That was kind of fun. We put a step loss on this sub here. Every other sub made it through the gauntlet, made it through the screening. Much to my chagrin, the, the die rolling was all low <laughs> and I needed a high number. Uh, so that uh, kind of sucked. The, uh, let's see, so that, so that was that. Now the final thing I'll talk about, and then I'll, I'll let you guys go because it's, we're into minute 15 already. Um, you know, this looks pretty helter skelter and, and this takes a little bit of thought. Uh, I, I put a lot of time into, um, all right, so I'm going to stop there for a moment, but I want to talk about this while, while this does look a little bit messy, the, 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 the challenge, obviously small boxes, but and, and there's a certain, there's limits to how many units can be serviced, i.e. brought from used to unused. Each turn, there's a replacement level as well. And then there's a distance of mega hexes from where you are to, uh, you know, a board entry area. Fair enough. Uh, and the details of that don't really matter right now. What is interesting for me in particular was I don't know. I, I, I might would, I might have liked to have seen all of the northern bases in one section here, and all of the southern in another section. Uh, maybe all the East German and Polish guys all in one area, just so you can conceptually, visually go. Oh, okay. I'm looking for dudes that I can fly on a mission over there. Uh, which which areas are they? You've got to read these codes and go, okay, well, so this, this dude is over in the Murmansk or MUI, MU1 area. Leningrad's a little far away. Poles are no good. Oh, here's an MU1 guy, Murmansk. So let's, let's use units from Murmansk. And when you're setting up, right, you're, you're going, okay, now I need to, uh, here's, I'll get the camera out of the way. Uh, I'm doing a really crappy job here of, uh, keeping things in frame for you. But here's a Murmansk, which is an MU-1. This is an MU-1. Here's a Leningrad uh, field. Here's a Leningrad field. It'd be nice to cluster those things so that, uh, or have them in hex order going north to south, basically. Well, south to north, I don't care which way it is. Just would have been easier or more convenient or have it done by, you know, lock location, these, uh, these line of communication areas off that are off map. Uh, just just to make it simpler and easier to use, it would have been. I think that would be a nice tweak if I was gonna if I was gonna build a custom set of airfields charts. That's what I'd, I'd probably do with these. And obviously, some of them I'd make the boxes bigger. I'd make the Murmansk box double the size. You know, if you if you can handle this, can handle twenty air units. If you can handle twenty air units, and this guy right here, he can handle one. Right. <laughs> I, uh, this 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 one here. I don't I don't need I don't need this thing to be big, but I do need this to be big. So I can't fit twenty units in here. And I I've, I know I'm not supposed to have ships in here, but it's a port, and they're not going in the task force. So I, where am I going to put them? So I, I, and I don't want to put them over here because then I'll forget them. Like I I almost forgot all these Leningrad dudes. They've got to they've got to go do something this turn. So. Simple user interface thing, not a big deal. Does it doesn't detract from the game? Just means you've got to kind of think about it. And I'm going to come up with some way to manage that either with blocks. I'm going to put some blocks on here or something like this. Like you know, orange is going to be MU1 or or Leningrad or whatever the case might be. Anyway, so interesting to kind of goof around with this and and plan your attacks out and go, okay, well, where can I pull assets from to support these attacks? Particularly after the first attack went horribly wrong, right? The first couple of attacks I'm getting these A1s and now I'm thinking, shit, I need to bring more guys into the air, use air, more air support. Where can I get them? Oh, well, dang it. Uh, I've put them in the wrong location. So I'll have to do extended range activities now. Now they're gonna have minus two to their effectiveness. Well, that sucks. So lots, to, lots goes into the planning of this game. And while I was planning uh, extensively over the last couple of days, it's really planning, learning, learning and planning and, and goofing around with the game a little bit versus, okay, now we're deep in it. 
now we're rolling the dice and it's all for real. Yeah. Have you have you logistically thought through where the assets are and how you can apply them? So it's pretty pretty interesting stuff. So all right, so we're having fun. Uh, on down, on we're going to move on down now to the southern end of the map and start rolling dice down there. We'll catch up with you and give you an update on that.